So for the past five months, pretty much every movie that I've seen where I watch the trailers has had the trailer for Gemini Man there. They are really, really hyping this movie up. And I got to go to an early screen tonight to go see Gemini Man starring Will Smith and directed by Ang Lee. Now, Ang Lee's had a really interesting career because he's made some classic movies and he's made some movies that are really not that good to me. I mean, Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon's a classic. The 2003 Hulk not so much, but I didn't hate it. Anyways, he's back here. Life of Pi, I think, is still his best movie, but he's back here doing Gemini Man. The cool thing about Gemini Man is that this movie has been in development for like 20 years. Like, if you look into the history of the movie, this movie was going to have all kinds of different actors from Schwarzenegger to Stallone and all these different guys, and it wound up being Will Smith, which is fine. And also in the film, Benedict Wong is in this movie as well, as well as Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. But Will Smith is the core of this movie. And if you've seen the trailer, you kind of know what the movie's about. But we'll talk more about it here. I do think the trailer gave away a little bit too much, but not that much. So Will Smith plays this government agent assassin. And he essentially is really good at his job. Like he can snipe people from very, very far away. And he's going to retire because... As the movie kind of tells you, he's been doing this for many, many years, and he's got a lot of demons inside of him. He has a lot of guilt, a lot of weird feelings. He calls them ghosts in the movie, and he's feeling, you know, just, it's time for him to retire. He's got enough money now, he's going to retire, but what ends up happening is he winds up finding out that the last guy who he killed is not who his bosses told him was, and he's like, wait a minute, did I kill the wrong guy? Did I do it for the wrong reason? He ends up getting targeted by the same agency that hired him, and it becomes this sort of espionage story where they send this special, I guess, uh, a subdivision, you can call it, uh, of the military, a branch, I guess you can say, called Gemini, and you find out as the film progresses why they're called Gemini, because they have, well, to take it right out of Star Wars Attack of the Clones, they create clones, and because... You know, Will Smith's character, Henry Brogan, is so good at his job, they made a clone of him. And so he finds out that this clone has been hired to terminate him. You know what I'm saying? And his whole thing is he has to survive and really resolve this puzzle and stop this agency from coming at him. So that's essentially the movie. Now, what's crazy about this film is, and we've talked about this before, the we saw it in Civil War, we saw it in Ant-Man, we saw it in a couple of the Star Wars movies. This de-aging thing they're doing, the movie is Will Smith versus Will Smith. It comes off like uh, Will Smith, Enemy of the State, versus Will Smith, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, because he has to fight a younger version of himself. And what they did was they used that de-aging technology to make himself look younger. And it was so... I think so well done in this movie. It was distracting at first, but as you watch the movie, it does seem to be a lot more polished than before. And I just remember watching Civil War and seeing the young, you know, Robert Downey and thinking, man, that's pretty clever. In this movie, though, that de-aging stuff is all over the film. I mean, because Will Smith is everywhere in this movie. And really, it's his movie. His performance in this movie, I think, is great. The script, I feel, is a little bit lackluster. I think the script and the story is predictable. I'm not going to lie. But understand that predictability is not always a bad thing. You can see a lot of this stuff coming. Again, not really a bad thing, but I have to talk about it as a criticism of the film. But that being said... You know, he, uh, the de-aging stuff means that he has to act with himself. And there's a couple of scenes in this movie where you can tell Will Smith's trying to win an award. I mean, he gets really emotional. Um, there's a few speeches here. And it just comes off like, uh, I don't want to say Oscar bait, but it does come off that way. Don't forget, like I said, Ang Lee made Life of Pi, which is an amazing movie. My favorite movie he's ever done. And that was an Oscar movie, Oscar-dominated film. So he might be going for that here. But the movie itself, though, doesn't really hold up as being an Oscar movie because of the fact that it's really... Just an action film. Uh, this movie is really kind of a combination of... Uh, and now if, you're, if you're old school, you remember this Arnold movie called The Sixth Day, which is a movie about where Arnold has to fight his own clone and he took over his family. Really, really good flick. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. This movie reminds me a lot of that film. Also a little bit of like, um, you know, a little bit of espionage type stuff. Kind of reminds you a bit of the Bourne movies, um, but it's Will Smith here. Enemy of the State meets Bourne with clones. That's pretty much what this film is. And 
You know, he carries the movie. And I'm not saying that Mary Elizabeth Weinstead or Winstead, excuse me, isn't great because she's actually she's adorable in the movie. She's cool. She's a she's got some really great scenes. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's Will Smith's movie. Now, a couple of things about the movie, the action sequences. This is why you go see this movie is for action, okay? Um, I was walking out of the theater and there were critics there giving their opinion, like actual movie critics. This is this is one of those pre-screenings. Right where the critics were there, and some of them were really good reviews. Other ones were a little too harsh. There was one guy who said that the movie was just schlock trash and this and that. It really is not. It is schlock in a way because we've seen movies like this before, but it's not a bad movie at all. If you're going into this movie wanting an action film with cool fight scenes and stunts and things like that and an interesting story, the movie does do a pretty good job. I wish they would have shown a little bit more of Henry Brogan's backstory. We find out some of it through dialogue, but I would have preferred flashbacks for this, to be honest with you. That's a criticism of the film, I think. Also, there's a really awesome motorcycle sequence in this movie that's cr crazy. It reminds me of the one from Terminator 2, except like even more absurd. But the problem is that as this sequence goes on, I feel like it becomes less and less realistic, especially the final part where this dude is doing like martial arts moves with the motorcycle being like one of his like legs like he like he's doing sweeps and high kicks with the motorcycle it gets really ridiculous to me that kind of took me out of the film because this is supposed to be a little bit more of a realistic movie but again again we're talking about a movie featuring you know these really scary accurate sniper guys and cloning so it's not that realistic even though i'm sure some people out there actually believe there is cloning going on and hey for all we know there may be who knows what, what the government's hiding but still uh, it took me out of the film, to be honest. Also, I feel like the character of uh, of the clone, Jackson, I feel like he, there wasn't enough with him. Like, like, again, most of it was dialogue and there was some good performances here. I mean, Will Smith tried to do the best he could, but I felt like it could have been done better. I think they could have put in more. But if the movie's already kind of long as it is, it's about a two-hour movie. Uh, so they really couldn't fit too much in. But there were some sequences that I felt were unnecessary. For example, the main villain of the movie, who, uh, who is named Clay, Clay Varys, he's played by um, Clive Owen. And he's good in the role, don't get me wrong. But there's a couple of scenes where he's talking to somebody else and they actually like repeat the scene. Like, they have almost the exact same scene happen a few minutes later. And that was not necessary. They could have cut that out or at least shortened it. Stuff like that I think is weird. Um, just weird editing stuff, you know, again, this is not a great movie, it's a good movie, though, it's a fun action movie, but if, you know, as a reviewer, if you're going to go see a movie in theaters, you know, it's gotta be Joker, I mean, Joker is the film to go see right now, um, it's the best movie right now in theaters, in my opinion, um, the best writing and performances, but this is not a bad movie, you know, again, if you've got, if you've only got a certain amount of money and time, I would pick Joker over this. I really, really genuinely would. But this was not bad at all. Yes, there is some predictability. Yes, uh, it's not a perfect film whatsoever. Obviously, Rotten Tomatoes. We're going to have another situation. We're going to have another one of those Rotten Tomatoes versus the critics thing. Uh, I'm sorry. Critics versus fans thing. I, I predict that happening because I think the movie was fun. And it really reminded me of Looper, too. There was a lot of Looper vibes. So just think about it like this. This movie is pretty much like Looper, except without the time travel, you know? That's kind of the best way to sum everything up, you know what I mean? Also, it reminded me a little bit of Metal Gear. You know what I mean? Like, if you go back... I'm not, I don't want to spoil Metal Gear, because if y'all haven't played Metal Gear Solid on the PS1 and PS2, the classic Metal Gear Solids, I mean, these are some of the best storylines ever in video games, ever. Um, I feel like this borrowed from that, you know? And I think Ang Lee did as good a job as he could have done here. Again, it's just an action film. You know, it really doesn't go beyond that. So that's it for my review of Gemini, man. Let me know in the comments what you think about the film. I'm not going to go into spoilers because, again, it's very predictable and there's not anything that I think is like, oh my goodness, like a shocking revelation. Even though in my viewing, people were shocked at a couple of scenes. There were a couple of shocking parts. There was a little bit of comedy there with Will Smith's kind of sarcastic tone. And, you know, Will Smith's very talented, bro. You can't take that away from me. He has a lot of charisma and you can see it on the screen. I mean, he is a good leading man. And Enemy of the State is still a better movie, but this is the closest I think he came to capturing that um, 
not the as good a quality as Enemy of the State, but I think having Will Smith be this kind of tough runaway guy, I think kind of, it reminded me of Enemy of the State. Enemy of the State's still better, though, I think. But this was a fun movie. Like I said, check it out. Thank you again, and I'll talk to y'all soon.